Since 7000 BC, there has been evidence of mankind brewing beer. Fast forward a couple thousand years to 1810, when America had 132 breweries operating. A couple decades later, in 1873, America had 4,131 breweries and an average of 20 gallon consumption per capita. Beer was booming. Then came Prohibition in 1920. It lasted till 1933, putting beer production underground. It didn't take long for the beer industry to start growing again. A year after Prohibition ended, there were 756 breweries across the nation. Now there are more than 3,000 breweries in the U.S. The beer market in the U.S. today is a $100 billion industry, and craft beer takes up 11% of that market, making craft beer a $19.6 billion industry. With such a small market and large profit, there has to be some serious competition. How do they market their product? What even makes a good beer? Where is good beer made? With a product that has been around for centuries, the only way to sell it is to get a little creative. Unfortunately, that January, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. Um, she passed away in June um, of 2006. We were trying to figure out what to change the name of the place to um, during that time. And because mom got sick and kind of changed my life, like I think it would change anybody's life when your mother's sick. And, you know, she's probably not going to be with us much longer. So it was, uh, Brad and I had talked about it, a bunch of us talked about it, but, um, on Mother's Day that year, I was like, you know, Mom, I think I'm going to call this place Jack Yeo's Pub and Brewery, and she was like, a bar? <laughs> and uh, we were getting ready to put together a brewery. It was dysfunctionally not together. <laughs> we're in a unique kind of situation down here in Athens, with Ohio University being here, in a very locally centered community here. I think that we've been able to to convert a lot of people to towards a craft-centered product um, because we have the community support. And then, again, being in Athens, where a majority of our population when schools in session are students, um, that creates a very unique kind of dichotomy there. Every story is unique in the brewing industry, but um, I'd like to think um, ours is in that category of being a pretty unique company, um, striving to be better in your community, as well as striving to keep consistency within our products as this industry keeps growing. Beer is made from four ingredients. You got water, barley or wheat, hops, and yeast. So we take grain, malted grain, and then coarsely grind it so that uh, the husks are still in there and that allows, that exposes those sugars within the grain. We then move that wort into our kettle. And once all that wort is then in the kettle, boil for um, usually about 90 minutes. Um, during that time, we add hops at different intervals, depending on the batch of beer and what's going on. When yeast meets sugar water, um, the yeast eats the sugars and converts it to alcohol and CO2. And then um, it will push that uncarbonated beer to another tank, where it sits to kind of settle for a little bit. 
Um, we then carbonate, and from there we package it into either kegs, cans, or bottles. I started, you know, drinking beer um, maybe at an earlier age, a little bit, and. Uh, but it, during my early college years, we started trying like stouts and porters and browns and started getting these little kind of craft six packs you know, not having any other brewers around or breweries. I think that isolation almost helped us to develop our kind of spot within the brewing world, you know, so Athens didn't really have like an awesome beer culture at that point in time. We're still building that, you know, now, but we were able to kind of bring new beers to people's palate, uh, new, new glassware, you know, different, all these different things, barrel aging, sour beers, whatnot. Certain things that, um, that I, I guess I, I imparted into the brewery um, that really kind of jumped Jackie O's from just a little college town brew pub into a more well-known regional, if not nationwide known, brew pub name was probably barrel aging. Um, you know, making high alcohol beers, aging them in different types of barrels, whether it was bourbon or rum or brandy or whatnot. We started doing that kind of early on. Um, we also started doing sour beers, so playing around with different types of bacteria and wild yeast and, uh, you know, getting those, um, making these sour beers that nobody else is really doing in the, in the, in the state at that time. Some of the more interesting ones like oil of Aphrodite with the local um, nuts or pawpaw wheat with local pawpaw fruit, that is uh, inspired by local, you know, that, um, that's us embracing Athens and doing something different. And, uh, other ones are just like you tasted another brewery's beer that really wows you. You're like, well, I'd like to try that, you know, or you, know, or you read about some historic beer and you kind of recreate that, or maybe you eat something makes you think about, well, I could probably make a beer that maybe incorporates some of these ingredients. There's so many things that can inspire a, a beer, um, so there's no really right or wrong way to do it. I do can design, um, do wood carving that becomes can design. And I've done how many? Five now? Five and there's another one coming out too. I've made Raz Wheat, which is the most recent can, Mystic Mama, uh, Firefly Amber, Hop Riot, and the Chumalungma. Uh, my uncle is a graphic artist in uh, in Athens, Ohio, and he does a lot of their uh, labels for their bottles. They gave me, I think they gave me the first three they gave me were, were Chumalungma, Mystic Mama, and the Firefly Amber, and I think they did want like a woman head for the for the Mystic Mama, sort of, you know, something, it was it was sort of vague, it was sort of like sort of magic, sort of uh, voodoo-y, or, and then a lot of tattoo images, because this is sort of based on that one for Mystic Mama sort of has a tattoo uh, reference and there's a lot of like gypsy head girls so I used that idea with that and then Chumalungma is um, that mountain. There's a yeti-like creature that's supposed to live there and so that's why we chose sort of like that gorilla yeti head, something with that. And then the firefly was sort of up in the air. Somebody usually feeds me at least a couple of ideas that I can pick from and then manipulate, and that makes it a lot easier. But I thought they were gonna be like black and tan, just because that's the way I work. And I thought, oh, well, like, I didn't even think that they might be different colors, which they're so much more interesting, different colors. And obviously, like, they look great on a shelf. You can see them from such a distance. And the fact that the can is all black is really striking, too. And I think that's why they do so well, is that they're interested in, like they really care about the way something looks and they, they want people to like it and they want people to enjoy it and they, they, they put it out there. So.
My favorite beer at Jackie is, it's kind of a tough one. Um, we do so many different types of beer. So like as far as our core lineup goes, uh, Mystic Mama is my favorite. Choma Lungma, it's my favorite beer hands down. I think I like the Raz Wheat. That's so far the best. And um, it's got a little sweetness in the background that I really like and, and that's my beer of choice. So the reason we brew those at the production facility is because they, they, they had proven themselves, you know. Those were the ones that we were brewing all the time and that people liked. There's room for us all to grow. Um, I don't see, I think it's an extremely collaborative industry. I don't really see it as a competition, I see it more as a as collaboration.